It's a gorgeous South Florida morning here at the Palm Beach International setting to test out the new Cooper Xeon RS3 G1 tires. It's a pretty brave move to put these tires on straight up race cars. The race truck is the perfect scenario for this particular tire. All day they were great, super predictable on the breakaway. The tires, they seem like they have a lot of grip. You'll get a lot of use out of the tires. For 15 seasons, the Castrol Toyota Racing Series has led the way in New Zealand motorsport. With 170 drivers and 276 races so far, the graduates have made their mark in international motor racing. This is the pathway for the world's young drivers. And this series hits the racetracks of New Zealand for five weeks every year on the quest to find the next world champion. The month of May in Indianapolis is the biggest of the year for the NTT IndyCar Series with the running of the Indianapolis 500, and it's also huge for the Road to Indy presented by Cooper Tires. The world's finest driver development ladder system is an exciting part of the action as the young Road to Indy drivers hit the ovals at both the iconic 2.5 mile Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the 5 8 mile banked Lucas Oil Raceway. The drivers of the Indy Lights presented by Cooper Tires took to the big track for the 17th running of the Freedom 100. Andretti Autosports Robert McGinnis laid down a pair of extremely quick laps during single car qualifying, winning the pole with a two lap average speed of 194.206 miles per hour. The start of the Freedom 100 was all that everyone expected, firing up 40 laps of constant action. A scary incident on lap two brought the race to an early halt when David Malukas lost the rear of his BN Racing Delara IL-15 and spun in turn two, collecting Bellardi Auto Racing's Chris Windham in the process. Both cars made hard impact with the safer barrier, but thankfully, both David and Chris were uninjured. The remainder of the race was edge of your seat action, as four drivers officially led laps, but the fight for the win came down to a final lap shootout between Andretti Autosport teammates Ryan Norman and Oliver Askew. Norman sensed the need to pass Askew for the lead on the final run down the back straight, knowing that those behind him were using the draft to close up quickly. And Ryan's move to the point set up a final drag race to the line. Flat footing it through turn four, Askew leveraged his momentum to tuck in behind Norman, and he would edge him at the line in yet another thrilling Freedom 100 finish. In victory lane, Askew was overcome with disbelief and emotion while celebrating his third win of the 2019 Indy Light season with his enthusiastic family and team. Just six miles west of IMS, the USF 2000 and Indy Pro 2000 teams and drivers tackled the challenging Lucas Oil Raceway as part of the Carb Night Classic. Exclusive Autosports Daniel Frost was the class of the Indy Pro 2000 field, dominating every session on both Thursday and Friday. The rookie from Singapore topped qualifying with a two lap average speed of 120.484 miles per hour, 1.5 miles per hour quicker than his closest competition. In the race, Frost was not challenged en route to a 4.8 second win in the Freedom 90, his first victory on the road to Indy. Hunkos Racing finished second and third, led by an impressive drive from Stingray Rob, who worked his way past Kyle Kirkwood on lap 48 to take a well-deserved second. Point leader Rasmus Lint put Kirkwood back one more spot, getting past the reigning USF 2000 champion on the final lap to take the third step on the podium, maintaining his point lead in the process. In the USF 2000's Cooper Tires Freedom 75, Newman Walks Racing's Cameron Shields took the lead from the outside of the front row at the green, moving pole sitter Colin Kaminsky back to second. Shields handled the race with relative ease, managing a pair of restarts to score a one and a half second win over Legacy Autosports' Alex Barron, who advanced to second from a fifth place starting position. Paps Racing's Kaminsky completed a strong effort with an impressive third place result to complete the podium. After a pair of events in May, the Road to Indy presented by Cooper Tires will now take a one-month hiatus before reconvening at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin in late June.
Kansas and Ohio. Smart coming through that corner. Like Spencer Piggott, drivers like Kyle Kaiser, Ed Jones, who have worked their way through the ranks, and of course, Pato Award and Colton Herta. Of course, Colton going to start on the pole position today, the youngest ever pole sitter in the history of IndyCar. And last year and the year before, multiple race wins in the Indy Lights program. Folks, we're just about a minute away from getting things rolling here. Of course, 18 drivers ready to fire up these power plants, two liter power plants, 170 horsepower, and they want to get things underway. And again, as I said before, Elite Engines building all the motors here in USF 2000 and in Indy Pro 2000. We're very, very happy to have the, in, uh, the uh, Elite Engines family with us here this weekend. Their shop is here uh, in Wisconsin. Yesterday, we had Steve Knapp give us the call to fire the command. Today is going to be Kathy Knapp. She's going to give us a hand here. She'll fire up these engines. Drivers will flick the switch and get things underway. And it's about time to fire them up and go wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing here on Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, the command to start engines from Mrs. Kathy Knapp. Thank you, Rob. On behalf of Cooper Tires and Anderson Promotions, drivers, start those elite engines. And there you have it, Miss Knapp giving us the call. The engines come to life. We'll send it back up to Eric Miller as we get set to go with USF 2000. Great race on tap. Thank you, Rob. Great race on tap for the Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship. Hunter McElroy, Braden Eves, a much better starting position today, starting from the outside of the front row in this race. 12 laps the distance for the Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship. Eve started eighth yesterday, had a, a better finish in the in the top uh, handful of digits, but Eve's looking to kind of rebound from uh, what was not a very good qualifying one session. Got a much better time in Q2 yesterday uh, and sets himself up for uh, possibly a little bit of weekend redemption, perhaps, for Braden Eves. In the number eight machine, starting on the outside, of row number one here at America's National Park of Speed. The field begins to come off of pit lane and takes to this four-mile ribbon of asphalt. It is going to be a beautiful race day here today. A little bit of overcast conditions, much cooler uh, this morning than it has been for the last couple of days here at Road America in the uh, the lower 60s right now, uh, just about 61 degrees. And uh, winds changing direction a little bit. That'll affect some of these drivers in the uh, two straightaways, uh, specifically the Marine Sweep and here on the main straightaway. Kettle bottoms really won't affect that much from the looks of things uh, so far this morning. That could certainly change with the wind coming out of the southwest uh, on this Sunday morning. So again, just past the 8 o'clock hour. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eric Miller, the voice of Road America. Rob will join us back in the PA booth here momentarily for the start of the Cooper Tires USF 2000 Championship. Field now working underneath the Sargento Bridge uh, as we begin this single pace lap. One advantage of Road America being this four-mile strip of asphalt is uh, typically one and done for the pace lap for um, this Road to Indy series. So we've got Indy Lights coming up next as well. Uh, this morning, a green flag approximately 8.50 this morning for Indy Lights, presented by Cooper Tires. Uh, our next race, our second race of our morning on this Rev Group Grand Prix, presented by AMR Weekend at Road America. Again, let's reset the field for you. Rob does always a great job uh, on the grid, but it's Uncle McElroy. Eves starting on the outside. Rasmussen and Kaminsky in row two. Row three is Keane and Suleiman. Crawford and Ron Garrido. Uh, in row four, round, uh, row five is uh, Alex Barron out of Port Washington, Wisconsin. Uh, Shields in the 73. Tomaselli and Gold in row six. Row seven, Barrichello and Siegel. Sundar Amurdi uh, in Femoral Arrow in row eight. In row nine, Miller and Bogle. So that's resetting your field as they continue to pace. Pace car right now underneath the quad bridge uh, as we are just about set to go green. And again, the fastest man in motorsports, Rob Howden. Just about ready to sit back down in the captain's chair for this Cooper Tires USF 2000 championship. And I just, I like making fun of you, Rob, because that's all right. You've got the, like, the fastest golf cart <laughs> ride ever, I swear. Yeah, we were in the Cooper Tire golf cart, and it's got some horsepower, I'll tell you that. Uh, we scooted over here pretty quick. Interesting, there was some issues. I'm not sure if you guys saw it on the, on the camera at all, but some issues with the pole sitter, Hunter McElroy. Uh Some engine problems there as we got set to roll. The... 
crew from Elite Engines plugging in, figuring, trying to figure out what was wrong quickly. He actually never shut the motor off, even though the remainder of the field did, able to get the thing. They figured cleared out, but we'll see. Potential issues here for yesterday's winner. Hunter McElroy starting on the pole. Could be interesting. We'll see what happens here. The start was uh, a little chaotic yesterday. A couple drivers uh, of cars hurting their points uh, collection yesterday, both Darren, uh, Darren Keen and Alex Barron. Uh, dropping to the tail of the field. Keen was able to actually get back up to, I think, 12th with some of the penalties and some of the uh, the collision on track. I'm looking at some of the video. Keen was down to the inside of turn one, and Barron kind of pinching down a bit on him. The contact was made. Ideally, we'll have a clean start. But again, Hunter McElray, the young Kiwi, getting his first road to Indy victory, and a big one for Paps Racing as well. Braden Ease for Cape Motorsports starting on the outside. It's uh, the Jay Howard and Paps Racing drivers on row two. Christian Rasmussen on the inside in the number six. And Colin Kaminsky on the outside in the 23. So here we go, folks. Three road to Indy events for you before we go. NTT Indy Car Series Racing. It's USF 2000, the first rung of the road to Indy. All these drivers chasing that scholarship that would send them to Indy Pro 2000 next year. They'll climb the hill. Such a unique start here at Road America. Out of 14, up the hill. Again, the sole red Mazda of McElroy on the inside, that white and black eight ball of Braden Eves on the outside. We're underway. Tyler Kunstler giving us the green, and we're racing. Green, green, green. Eves comes across quickly to tuck in behind the gearbox of McElroy as they work their way up to turn number one. We usually go two, three wide. Do we get through cleanly the first time? McElroy's going to have it. Big push to the inside comes, I believe, Suleiman in the blue D-Force D, uh, D car. Indeed, Suleiman tucked to the inside. This straightaway so long, you can actually make a pass to the inside and make kind of a draft pass before you get even into the braking zone on the starts. Clean through one. Looks like clean through turn number two as well. Potentially some dust in the back there. Hopefully everyone able to get through cleanly. Again, working down now to turn number five, then up to six. Tough corner, that blind corner under the bridge of turn number six. McElroy with a pretty solid start. Wow, they're side by side still. That's Kaminsky and I think Suleiman. Colin Kaminsky hung out to dry a little bit on the outside. Everybody else coming through cleanly. A little bit of brake lock up on the entry to turn six. It's Indeed. easy to do that when you're uh, uh, you know, when you're uh, looking into a blind corner. Somebody off in the grass to driver's right, and that may have been the the brake lock up a little heavy on the power yet up the hill. We'll try to get a, a number for you on that driver. Everyone else settling in pretty nicely so far, and that's the key. We want to have an open, a clean, open lap. And that's what we always look for in USF 2000 and, and, frankly, all of our categories, trying to give these drivers as much seat time as they possibly can. We don't like to see the, you know, the opening lap incident that maybe robs the laps because, again, as happens with our particular program, we have a set amount of laps, but it's also uh, a set time. We can only go so deep into the time as well. Uh, I believe it's 12 laps or 40 minutes here for the drivers in USF 2000. So, again... Thus far, pretty solid start for Hunter McElroy as he's been able to jump out into the lead once again. As I said, there were some motor issues on the grid. They were able to get that remedied. And so he still leads. We'll give you a good fulfilled rundown when they roll up across to complete lap number one. And again, a great way to get the day started here at Road America. I hope you guys had a fantastic evening last night. Take the opportunity to say hello to everyone tuning in to the Road to Indy TV app on their mobile device. And as they come across the line, we'll line them up for you. Hunter McElroy with the lead. Braden Eves goes to second. Rasmussen third. Kaminsky fourth. Keen now in the fifth spot. Good move for Alex Barron. He goes up to seven. They'll work their way through turn number one. Barron locking up the brakes a little bit there on the Legacy Autosport machine as he rolls into turn number one. Jack Crawford in eighth. Cameron Shields has worked his way to ninth. Barrichello in tenth. Reese Gold, 11th. Tomaselli in 12th. Jack Miller, 13th. Even Sundar Murthy, now 14th. Anthony Famularo in 15th. Nolan Siegel, 16th. Christian Bogle in 17th. And the driver who went off up there in turn number six, the number 27 of Matt Round Garrido, the BN Racing driver. Had a pretty good qualifying effort to start in that eighth spot, but that issue coming up the hill. More chaos coming through turn number five. That, the rumble strips on the outside there, pretty aggressive for these light USF 2000 cars, and it bounces them around a little bit. You've got to really place the car correctly coming out of that turn five. Of course, you're, you're woeing the car up big time, back on the throttle 
uh, Eric. But you got to be smart coming to that corner. Well, it's really you know all about uh, just keeping momentum. And you know if you go off track, you know slightly, it's really easy to to kind of upset the car enough where you lose traction, and that's really what uh, affects these cars a lot. The, the suspension very flexible and mobile with these cars, but uh, they can't really take too much abuse either. Well, and the key is too when you're bouncing like that, if the car's not situated correctly, if you maybe have a little bit of oversteer and the car's starting to get loose on you, if that's going to happen, then it's going to bounce away from you. And that's the key. you got to have that car placed correctly when it starts hitting those bumps. So just working lap number two now. I believe we have a new leader. I think that Braden Eves has gotten to the point. Indeed, Eves goes to P1. Rasmussen going to work now on McElroy. So put Braden Eves to the front. And what a recovery it's been for Braden. He did not start this weekend off well. Qualified eighth for race number one. Improved that significantly to second for race two. Braden Eves finishing fourth yesterday against your point leader coming into the weekend. He's won the first four races and didn't quite have the result he would have wanted, I think, at the oval race at Lucas Oil, the Lucas Oil Raceway in Indianapolis, but still was able to get a top five. Bruno Tomaselli falling uh, three positions in the last couple of laps here. She had a really good day yesterday. Just put together some solid Agreed, yeah. solid effort uh, in the top 10. Uh, had a really good result yesterday and a little bit of a mistake in the turn 12, locking up the brakes a little bit, and she's lost a couple of spots now. She was in the middle of a really heated battle with Jack Crawford and a couple other drivers. They were really going at it for that position inside the top 10. But probably the best I've seen Bruna run, actually, was yesterday. She had a really good finish, and I think – that whole team at Paps Racing, they're really kind of a cool little family of like brothers and sisters kind of a thing. Uh, they have a lot of fun with each other and, and, of course, a lot of great data to work from as well. Big move here, though, for Braden Eves, as I said. He didn't quite have the pace yesterday. Ended up finishing fourth, but he's worked his way to the front in the Cape Motorsports number eight machine. Darren Keene still running in that fifth spot. That's the other Cape car. He's settling. He's got Alex Barron right behind him. So at this point, Kind of driver settling in for the early part of this race. As I had said off the top, much cooler today uh, than we had in yesterday's race. Of course, more similar to what we had, I think, uh, during the our, you know, our 8 a.m. practice and qualifying sessions when it was down to like 59 or 60 degrees. But race-wise, much different than the temperatures we had yesterday. Good opportunity for these drivers to kind of test themselves. Eves leading the way by about eight-tenths of a second. Matt Round Garrido, who fell to the tail of the field, working his way back forward, actually set the fast lap of the race already at 212.451. So you know Matt Round Garrido on, the, on it. In the turn 12, it looks like Rasmussen has gotten around Malcarrow. I here. just saw that. You're indeed correct. Looks like Rasmussen in that number uh, six machine for Jay Howard, driver development. Rasmussen, the driver out of Denmark, up into the second position. He needs a good finish like that after a couple of rough ones. He's gone to P2. Christian Rasmussen to second. McElroy back to third. Fourth is Kaminsky. Fifth is Keen. Driver coming into pit lane. That's Matt Round Garrido, I believe. Tough one for Round Garrido. Just that, oh, that, oh that's, that's his teammate, Anthony Famularo. I picked up one of the BN cars, the coloring, the livery. But indeed, Anthony Famularo into pit lane in the number 28. Let's see if he rolls by. When he rolls by, if we can see any damage on the car at all. Yeah, rear wing looks fine. That's all we can really see as they come behind here with the with the the front wall, front straight wall kind of in our way. So that'll move everybody up a couple spots again. Thomas Ellie goes back up to 13th. Cinder Murthy to 14th. Round Garrido's closed up to Cinder Murthy. So Matt Round Garrido trying to salvage some more points here. As they run with Braden Eves as your leader. Oh, that potential contact coming through five or three wide up under the bridge. Patience, better part of valor there. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to give at the top of the hill in six. That's it, isn't it? Somebody of that three had to kind of give up to realize where they were. Driver actually on the inside, I think, was the furthest back. But this is what we saw yesterday, too. We saw just some real – no battle for the lead. Obviously, Hunter Mack were able to pull away yesterday. But we saw battles for, you know, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And there was a four-driver battle for that that eight to 12 at one point, or eight to 11. There was just really good battles all the way through the field. And that's what we want to see for these young guys. It's all about going at it, getting in that dogfight experience before they move up to Indy Pro 2000. 
And we do have a lot of drivers, of course, of different ages here in USF 2000 as well. You get a guy like Braden Eves, 18 years of age, Hunter McElray as well, drivers in their late teens, uh, you know, as, as old as 20 years old. Where you, then you've got our, our four or three 14 year olds in Reese Gold, Nolan Siegel, and Jack Crawford. You think about the difference of experience in karting, what they've done. Here's a replay of that incident. That was almost contact between Christian Raspin and Hunter McElroy. I think uh, Raspin look, looked like he got a little bit loose coming across the rumbles, as we had talked about. The car was already kind of sliding a bit on exit. He had it rotating, he hit that rumbles, and it bounced a bit more. I don't think McElroy was able to capitalize, but tried to. I think McElroy is actually in the clutches potentially now of Kaminsky coming across the line. Indeed, Colin Kaminsky looking to try to go by his teammate. Looked like Alex He's Barron got him. Had, Alex Barron had pulled out as well, tried to get around. Barron loses the spot too. Manuel Sulu unable to get by, but indeed Colin Kaminsky goes by into turn number one. So Kaminsky now into third. It's a two-second lead for Braden Eves. And I was just getting ready to talk about points because right now Hunter McElroy, of course, getting some great points yesterday with the, uh, with the race win. But now, it, as they run on the racetrack right now, it's a 38-point lead for Braden Eves. And that was the key for Braden. He wanted to get out of here with a, a, still a solid lead. Lots of racing still to come. We go to a doubleheader in Toronto. And then the big weekend. Oh, more contact there. I believe that may be Alex Barron's front wing. Not sure, but all the way to the grass to driver's left on the way up to six. Okay, potentially a front wing for Alex Barron. We'll try to figure out who that was coming through that, uh, that particular corner. That's five up to six. There was contact. We'll try to pick it up. You think that was hard to see coming through turn number seven, trying to pick it up from the cameras that we have access to. Indeed, good call for, from Eric Miller there. Front wing for Alex Barron. And now, these cars don't require a lot of down or don't build a lot of downforce off of the arrow. It's more, when we came to the new car, it's definitely more mechanical grip. But you can see coming through the carousel, the car of Barron pushing wide, not able to keep it down to the bottom. And he's, there's going to be pressure coming into the kink for sure. And indeed, Suleiman's already by. Oh, can you imagine taking it? Oh, how I just said you can't take the kink like that with no front wing. How much commitment does it take in that, just to go through the kink alone, but without that front wing, that <laughs> car just washed out. How Barron saved that car. My mind was this. My mind was you can't take it full throttle. You can't hold it through turn uh, through that corner, the kink, so fast. That little right-hand jink on the, uh, the back straight. He's going to have to come to pit lane. Another incident for Alex Barron. He's, there's no way he's going to be able to hold on. He's going to keep following through the field. He needs to come to pit lane here. Whether or not he does so, I don't know. Here comes the replay into turn number five. It almost looks like he clipped the coming in on the apex entry to five. I don't think it was car to car contact. I believe well, he clipped it on the unless it happened earlier in the corner. If we can get a look at that replay again, you watch Suleiman coming through the corner. It's almost like he's starting to get sideways, like potentially he got into the back of him coming into the corner. Hopefully we can get that replay again. Here it is. Watch the wing already coming off. And look at Suleiman. He's sideways. I think they You're made right. contact coming in. Yeah, it looked to me like Suleiman, from what we saw from the replay, he was the car was already starting to rotate. He was putting some wheel into it. Then he then he does a massive block move to try to take Barrett all the way to the the grass. But again, after getting hit from the rear, you know you're probably fi figuring, hey, you know what? You're not going by me after that kind of a move. Regardless, it is shaking things up a little bit. Suleiman now runs six. Jack Crawford into seventh. Eighth is Barrichello. Ninth is Gold. Tenth spot now is Cameron Shields. And Alex Barron, as we said, fall into the tail of the field. Now we're settling in. Big gap back, actually, from Darren Keene. Almost five seconds back to 6th, 7th, 8th, and ninth. The two D-Force drivers, Suleiman and Crawford, 6th and 7th. 8th is Barrichello, 9th is Golden, 10th is Shields. Matt Round Garrido has got his way back up into 11th. That's a, he's got a great car. 2-12-7. He's in the middle of the battle, but he's fighting guys that are running 214s. That's that fight for 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th, all doing 214s right now. They're off the pace in terms of the speed they need, but again, they're racing so hard. That was that last lap where we saw the incident in 5, backed them up a bit. They'll probably get back down to the 12s, I would believe, this time back around. But this is all about Braden Eves. We saw it early, Eric. He was not the quickest driver. Cape Motorsports struggled a little bit. Darren Keene was up in the top five, but Eves himself, I think, is more personally struggling at the racetrack, and he was not on pace at the uh, the first practice session on Friday, but 
what the difference a couple of race make, a couple of days make, right? He's up yeah, front now. Absolutely, and halfway through this one, but Eve struggled quite a bit in, in Q1 and uh, kind of soldiered his way through race number one Agreed. yesterday. Yep. But having an opportunity to start up front, clean air again, kind of putting yourself in position to not have to worry about what's ahead of you, just. Put your head down, elbows up, and go after it. He's never been here before either. Some of these drivers have, and he has to learn that learn this track. But here, coming by at the number 12 of Manuel Suleiman. So the driver, I wonder whether that's a drive-through penalty for that move from the right to the left side and trying to block uh, Alex Barron coming up the hill. It was a pretty aggressive block. Well, if he gets, if he comes back out on track, we'll know it's a drive-through. At this point, we can't quite see it. But we'll fill you in whether or not he comes back onto the racetrack. If indeed he does, it was a drive-through penalty for Manuel Suleiman. It was a very aggressive move from the right side to the left side of the track to try to hold off Alex Barron. But to his, you know, to his credit, to a certain extent, it only happened because Barron, I believe, got into the back of him coming into the breaking zone of five. Indeed, the number 12 back on the racetrack. So, yep, drive-through penalty for Manuel Suleiman. We saw that yesterday in Indy Lights with the aggressive block that Renus VK threw on Robert McGinnis after he went four wheels off. So, race control trying to, I think, stick with the penalties and the, the actual uh, you know, fine itself in terms of taking him down pit lane. Well, I think we saw that at the conclusion of the race, too, going into turn 12 with the contact yesterday for Rasmussen getting uh, kind of punted off into the yeah by Jack Crawford. And 12 by Crawford yeah. and, and Crawford got the time penalty yep. so uh, race control you know still the really the goal with the USF 2000 championship is to groom these racers and, and sometimes you have to you know kind of you know educate them on the racecraft and do it now this is, this is do it now yeah Co correct that type of thing now this is that's exactly what race control did uh, yesterday and they're they're continuing to do today so uh, i don't think uh, i would argue that call either the fight we're seeing now is hunter mcelroy falling back through the field remember he was second at one point lost a spot to first rasmussen then kaminsky now he's got darren Keene putting the pressure on kaminsky and rasmussen going back and forth for second spot kaminsky led the last lap as we now are Working lap number eight of a scheduled 12. Three big road to Indy races for you. The second ends of the double header. USF 2000 to start. We'll roll into Indy Lights next. The top rung of the road to Indy will get on track. We'll see uh, if Ryan Norman can come back and do it again. Flying Ryan scoring his first road course victory here in Indy Lights competition, having won on the Oval at Gateway Motorsports Park last year. Side by side, coming into turn number five, Kaminsky and Rasmussen going at it again. Who's going to come through? Look at the gap for the leader. No, that was actually that was actually Barron. There's your leader. There's the gap. Macaray's, I think, going to get by Rasmussen. Here comes Keen to the inside as well. Do they get through cleanly? Keen not able to finish it off. That's second, third, fourth, and fifth. Throw I, a blanket. Yeah, I think the Macaray and Kaminsky both by Rasmussen there. Keen being smart. He needs a good finish here after the issue he had yesterday. As they run on the racetrack, first in points would be Eves. Second would be McElroy. Third would be Kaminsky. Fourth, Keen. That's actually Keen and Shields would be tied for fourth with 105 points. And then Suleiman, I believe, with 99 would be fifth. Eve slowly starting to chase down what would be the first lap car of the session, uh, which would be Alex Barron. Two laps down yesterday and on the tail end of the lead lap right now uh, as well for Alex Barron. Just kind of a dreadful weekend for the Port Washington <sighs> driver. Yeah, no doubt about that. And Rasmussen and, and McElroy continue to go at it. Kaminsky's been able to give himself a little bit of room, but Darren Keene right there watching both Rasmussen and McElroy battle it out. I think Darren's probably bided his time to a certain extent here. He tried to make the move coming up the hill to six. Oh, big slide. Exit of turn number 14 for Keene. He's going to lose a lot of ground. He'll need the draft because he had that thing crossed up on the exit of turn number 12. Yeah, he lost a bit of ground there. Potential for a driver, number 28, Famularo, maybe off in turn number five. Field putting lap number eight in the books. Matt Round Garrido has worked his way now up into ninth position. Good recovery from the for the driver who fell to the tail of the field early. Back up to ninth. Cameron Shields into seventh, started tenth. 
Drivers who have followed to the tail, Manuel Suleiman and Alex Baer, and those issues early as we talked about. Reese Gold was up in the top 10 at one point. He's fallen down to 12th. Four laps remaining here in USF 2000. Indy Lights drivers preparing themselves in the paddock area. Oh, driver spinning. That's Rasmussen. Rasmussen goes around. Back on the throttle. He's going to lose a lot of ground. Yeah, we talk a lot about the gator strips. If we could get a, a replay of that, I just want you to see the left rear shake as he got back on the power to see how he was wide coming in. Situa- yeah, just you can wide. See. It looked like he uh, got into the marbles and, and just came around. But watch him hit the gator strips here. Just watch that rear end bounce. <laughs> That's how th- you're talking about maybe three or four inches of gator strip there. It's like going through the whoops of a supercross race. Absolutely. It's just so violent when you run across them. So when they hit them at speed, you kind of skip across the top of them a little bit as the contact patch of the tire rolls across. But in that sideways moment, that is just so detrimental to the suspension. More dust being kicked up on the exit of turn number. Uh, turn number 10 coming out of the carousel. I wonder if we had a driver go off, but really what has happened here is that battle that we had for second, third, and fourth has shaken up a little bit. In fact, it looks to me like I think McElroy might have gone into P2, every other P2, I think. I think it was potentially, was it Rasmussen again? Or it might have been Kaminsky who dropped the wheel. We'll update it when they come back through. I have a feeling that Keane could be up into third. Leaders coming up the straightaway now. Braden Eves is the leader, as Indeed, we said. McElroy is in second, I believe. Yeah, Hunter McElroy has gone to second spot. Let's see who's in third. It's still, I think it's still, it's no, it is Keen. Darren Keen to third. Kaminsky fourth. Rasmussen to fifth. Crawford sixth. Oh, the battle further back is a good one, though, between Sundar Murthy, Thomas Elliott, and Gold. That is 10th, 11th, and 12th. They're nose to tail. And confirm, Fumalero did go off course in turn five. Now down uh, two laps to the leader. So uh, an interesting lap there on, on lap number eight. As uh, you got to think that Kaminsky potentially dropped the wheel on the exit of the carousel. We saw some dust fly up. And then both McElroy and Keene able to get by. So the Cape Motorsports drivers having a pretty good weekend here so far. Or a pretty good day, rather, as they are now first and third. Eve's your leader, Keen second. Good battle between 10th and 11th, Sundar Murthy and uh, Bruno Tomaselli, separated by just about a, a tenth and a half. Keen, uh, look at uh, Reese Gold, able to get by both of them. But coming up, it's Tomaselli down to the inside again, up into turn six. What a good battle between three young drivers here in this road to Indy. Both Reese Gold and Yuvin Sundar Murthy in their freshman seasons here in the road to Indy in USF 2000. Barrichello putting a ton of pressure here now as well on Shields. Cameron Shields back by just about four-tenths. Shields, of course, though, had a great run yesterday to P3. Seventh would be solid for him. He'd be fifth in points. Keene's move to third would break that tie that he had with Cameron Shields. So Darren Keene would now move into the fourth spot. So top four in points actually run top four on the racetrack, and that's normally what we'll see. As they run on the racetrack now, Braden Eves would leave with a 30 Five-point lead, but we're not done at all. That is for sure. Good battle further back between Jack Miller, Nolan Siegel, and Christian Bogle. That's 13th, 14th, 15th. Braden Eves trying to get the job done. 4.2 seconds out front. A dominating performance. Was able to win strongly at St. Petersburg round number one. Darren Keene setting fast lap as he tries to go after McElroy. But Eves won the first race. Second race actually was dominated by both Keene and Rasmussen. Darren Keene led to the very final lap, looped the car going down into turn uh, number 14 or 15 there, last corner. Ooh, driver almost going. Somebody's going to be going off there, potentially locking the brakes up into turn number three, coming down the hill. They got into the gravel on the outside. Yeah, somebody had potentially off track over there. But this is a good battle between Keen and McElroy now for second. Here comes your leader through turn number five. Keen side by side with McElroy, and he's got the spot. Beautiful pass there for Darren Keen. McElroy a little off the track. But 
you've uh, called so many races here, Eric. That's a great move. You dive to the inside of five, but you own five. You drive it through. You don't make the apex. Push by the apex a bit and make sure you own the corner. Well, in that situation, it's all about positioning your car, too. You've got to take the advantage of the spot. Here's a look in the turn three. That's, I think that's Rasmussen potentially. Yeah, that's Rasmussen. Wow, he was able to keep it on the racetrack. That's impressive. Very, very <laughs> lucky save there, getting yeah. the left rear off into the grass on the entry to three. You do not want to do that. No. That's not good. But talk again about that pass. Like I said, you have to get to the inside. It's more about positioning it to get yourself to the inside. You know, Obviously, you want to get to uh, right about the, the radiator duct, the, the inlet, because if you're not there, you've got to kind of give up the corner a little bit, and you're much harder on the brake. So it's all about position. You know, Racecraft is really key, and these cars are all about momentum. So once you're alongside somebody, you can carry your momentum through that corner, but you still have to let them race through the corner. And, and that was right on the edge. <laughs> and th that's the fine line that you have to find, though, with Racecraft. White flag will fly this time by. Last lap here for the drivers in USF 2000. Here comes Hunter McElroy. He's going to come back on Darren Keene. Keen's got about a, maybe a length and a half as they come across start finish under that white flag. Kaminsky as well in the fourth spot. Fifth is Rasmussen. Barron absolutely hanging on without a front wing to the lead lap right now. I can't believe he's still he's, on the racetrack. He's just hanging on as much as he's trying. And he turned to 211. Right. Let's be real. He's only a half a second off. He, the, the place that he is going to have to give it up is the carousel. He's going to have to be off the throttle to get the car to, uh, to hand. I'm sure he's got the tools all changed. But again, here we go. Final lap here. Let's put the, the, uh, the spotlight on Braden Eve. Let's watch this battle for second as well. Darren Keaton and Hunter McElroy. Great run for Braden Eves. This would be his fifth win of the 2019 season. Won the first four races. Top five of the Lucas Oil Raceway event, the Oval. Trying to come back here for race number seven. Looking good through turn seven, back to turn number eight. Keen holding a decent little advantage as well over McElroy. Matt Round Garrido, let's give him some props up to eighth. Able to get by Cameron Shields. So Round Garrido to eighth. Shields lost a spot to Barrichello as well. He was up into seventh at one point. Shields now down into ninth spot, still holding on to that, I believe, fifth position in the points. Final lap, though, through the kink comes your leader, Braden Eves. Eves up from Ohio. Rookie year, a couple of F4 victories in the past couple of years. Top driver in the national karting ranks here in America. Focused totally, though, on his open-wheel career now as he will have a, str a strong lead over Hunter McElroy. Indeed, 37 points it'll be leaving Road America and heading to the streets of Toronto. He'll work his way up out of Billy Mitchell Bend through 13 and 14. Great recovery for a driver who didn't have the pace to start the weekend. He's going to do that little, little weave up and down the front straight. Anyway, it's a big one. Solid victory here today. The winner of the second race at Road America, Braden Eves in USF 2000. Darren Keene, strong run to second. Hunter McElroy, third. There's your podium. Eves, Keene, and McElroy. Kaminsky ends up fourth. Rasmussen holds on to fifth. Sixth. The 14-year-old 14, 14 Jack Crawford, Eduardo Barrichello, his best run of the year. He finishes seventh. Matt Round Garrido recovers to eighth. Cameron Shields in ninth. Reese Gold, tenth. Bruno Tomaselli, that battle we saw between Gold, Tomaselli, and Sundar Murthy. Gold, tenth. Tomaselli, eleventh. And Sundar Murthy in twelfth. Jack Miller finishes thirteenth. Nolan Siegel in the fourteenth spot. Christian Bogle, fifteenth. Manuel Suleiman, that drive-through penalty, he ends up in 16th. And as we said, Alex Barron, minus the front wing, coming home in the 17th position. Uh, Anthony Famularo out early, as we said, in that number 28 machine over in turn number five. A lot of racing, Eric. The uh, We saw some battles for the lead, not today, but the battle, second, third, fourth, fifth, battles for same thing for seventh, eighth, and ninth. A lot of good racing throughout the field. Well, you talked about uh, just coming to the checkered flag with Braden Eves having such a, a dominant win from the from the front row today and kind of just recovering from, from a bad Friday-Saturday combination a little bit. But uh, that, that's really what you have to do in a championship-caliber form. 
is you have to mine the good days, and That's you also it. have to mine the bad days. And and he was able to salvage a few points yesterday, kind of recover from the you know mid pack start. That's it. Able to kind of work his way forward in race one. wasn't a great result, but it wasn't a horrible result. Uh, you look at you know the the result weekend for Alex Barron two days finishing seventeenth or worse. Uh, that's a horrible result for Alex Barron. I know certainly frustrated for the Port Washington Wisconsin driver, but but Eve's mining the points a little bit. He had such a big lead from the earlier. You, you don't want to say he can kind of afford to give up a little bit of points because as the point leader, you never want to give away points uh, to your competitors. But he did a really nice job just. Minding the minions this weekend, it, just trying to get back to just a consistent run. You want to have the highs. The wins are great, but you, you, you limit the damage of, of lesser lesser finishes. He's, he's not finishing 10th or 11th or 12th. He was 5th at the Oval. He was, I think he was 5th again or 4th yesterday. So even though he's not up front, he's still putting those top 10s, top 5s in, and that's key. And again, as I said, a pretty solid lead. 37 points now, the advantage for Braden Eves heading to Toronto over Hunter McElroy. Uh, slotting into, I believe, where are we? Third in points would be with 120, Colin Kaminsky. Uh, fourth would be Darren Keene now with 114. And fifth, Cameron Shields with 103 points. So. It's a gorgeous South Florida morning here at the Palm Beach International setting to test out the new Cooper Xeon RS3 G1 tires. It's a pretty brave move to put these tires on straight up race cars. The race truck is the perfect scenario for this particular tire. All day they were great, super predictable on the breakaway. The tires, they seem like they have a lot of grip. You'll get a lot of use out of the tires. For 15 seasons, the Castrol Toyota Racing Series has led the way in New Zealand motorsport. With 170 drivers and 276 races so far, the graduates have made their mark in international motor racing. This is the pathway for the world's young drivers. And this series hits the racetracks of New Zealand for five weeks every year on the quest to find the next world champion.